Hi guys, welcome back once again. So Dr. Hadi here. Today's topic is from the biochemistry that is feedback inhibition. I hope you might have watched the part one of this topic regulation of enzyme because this whole series is about the regulation of enzyme. Uh, the part one of this heading was already uh, discussed part a was allosteric regulation today under the same heading regulation of enzyme we will discuss feedback inhibition as its second part part b so here this is our part b beside this feedback inhibition we will also study the comparison between the feedback regulation and elastic regulation this will also be included in today's lecture and feedback inhibition versus feedback regulation usually these two are similar but there is slight differences there we will also discuss this difference as well in today's lecture so this today we are going to have a, a interesting lecture Okay, let's start. Uh, I hope you also know what is enzyme regulation. Enzyme regulation is when the product is less or absent and your body start more product by the help of enzyme. This is a regulation. Or when the product inside your body is in excess and your body decrease this product bring it to the normal this is also called regulation so inside the body by different ways enzyme activity activities are regulated the first way by which activity was regulated was the elastic regulation Feedback inhibition is also a kind of regulation of enzyme activity but its style is little bit different from that of elastic regulation. Okay, how? In feedback inhibition, the product of the reaction in a multi-step reaction controls its own production so you will you may not uh, get the idea from this def definition i will explain to the help of this example suppose this is a multi-step reaction multi-step reaction means a reaction which completes in more than one step this is step one step two step three and finally you got the product Suppose from A to B, the react this is our reactant and this is intermediate product. Suppose there is an enzyme E1 which is involved in conversion of A into B. Then we are now going to convert B into C. Now B is our reactant, C is our product. So here another enzyme E2 is there which is performing this job. Then we have another enzyme that converts C into D that is final enzyme so there are three enzymes involved in this pathway suppose that the final product D is in axis is in axis lot of D we have uh, D D D D D D this is our product Suppose it is now in excess and body don't want the product to become more increase. The body now tries to decrease this level. Okay, how this product D will now proceed and will attach itself with the enzyme number one that attachment is very special 
suppose this is our enzyme e1 this is our enzyme e1 here enzyme has its allosteric site in here this is the active site of enzyme how many site we have two sites you you we know this this is the active site and this is the allosteric site so a c t i v active site and this one is the allosteric site you know we we have discussed this very well in my previous video that what is allosteric site so the product which is in axis the product will come here and attaches itself at the allosteric site of the enzyme is this product attaches at the, at the site it causes a change in the shape of the active site as i do we we know we discussed that this act like a button when the site is activated by such product then the shape of active site will be changed once the shape of the active site is changed this substrate b will not sorry this substrate a will not be able to attach at active site hence a will no longer convert into b when a is not convert into b then definitely b will not convert into c and c will not convert into d so your whole reaction will stop this stoppage of the reaction is exactly what we call regulation so this is of course enzyme regulation because something was brought back to the normal but this type the mechanism here is now called feedback inhibition now now you can see here in the definition when the product of a multi step when the product of a multi step reaction controls its own production it's, of course it is the the own production of the product by inhibiting the first step this is the first step this is the second this is the third by inhibiting the first step of a what of a multi step reaction so this is how in the feedback inhibition works it little bit looks like allosteric regulation but there is difference we will discuss it okay it is a type of allosteric regulation so this is fine it is a type of what allosteric regulation because of uh, we discuss here uh, allosteric site the final product attaches itself to the allosteric site fine of the first enzyme acting as a negative allosteric effector here the final product is acting like a negative allosteric effector we have also discussed this negative and positive effector in the first part by the name of allosteric regulation if you want to get this just type allosteric regulation by dr hadi you will get that video negative allosteric effectors change their um, change themselves with the allosteric site and change this active shape uh, uh, si uh, shape of the active site as a result reaction will not proceed as compared to the negative allosteric effector there is positive allosteric effectors positive allosteric effectors also attach themselves at the allosteric site but they don't stop this reaction they actually uh, support the reaction so in that case they will be called the positive but here the product is acting like a negative allosteric effector in simple word because it is blocking the reaction okay now feedback inhibition versus feedback regulation usually we uh, interchangeably use these two words like similar words feedback inhibition feedback regulation are same okay fine at many places these two are same but sometime you 
you will find a difference between these two feedback inhibition and feedback regulation at which point these two are different point number one feedback regulation is a phenomena this is this is the first this is first thing as compared to feedback regulation feedback inhibition is a mechanism so this is the first thing now let me discuss this let me tell you this in detail how these two are different by telling you one important example you know very very well that your body inside your body you have a liver inside liver you have enzyme you have what you have enzyme 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 you can also call it hmg coa fine i think there is no need to write this name but at least you should know there is there are enzyme a lot of enzyme is there so enzyme is there what this enzyme do this enzyme convert a lipid into cholesterol into cholesterol cholesterol is also an important lipid a video lecture is also available on cholesterol so this conversion of lipid into cholesterol is done by enzyme which is present inside your liver and this cholesterol is called hepatic cholesterol fine hepatic cholesterol why because this cholesterol is produced inside your liver so we call it hepatic cholesterol when this person start taking cholesterol from the diet let's suppose this person is starting is taking cholesterol from the diet diet this is not the cholesterol that is producing in his body but now he is taking ready-made cholesterol which is not synthesizing inside his or her body so what will do what will happen that this dietary cholesterol once it enters the body of that person as a result of this dietary control this hepatic control level will decrease of course this is just a, a, a control mechanism when your body realizes that cholesterol is coming from outside then your body will realize that why should i synthesize more cholesterol if the cholesterol is already ready-made cholesterol is coming why should i synthesize cholesterol so your body will definitely decrease cholesterol this is the, 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 the control mechanism the regulation inside our body our body is designed and made in in a in a very good in a, a, a very fantastic way there are lots of lot of chemical reactions are there and, and lots of chemical processes are there every chemical process is under strict regulation so this is also regulation so up to this place this process is called feedback regulation and in simple word we say if you if, if you take uh, cholesterol in the diet uh, in the diet and your body will decrease uh, cholesterol this is called feedback regulation now we will also check whether this process which has just recently done whether it is feedback inhibition as well or not so the answer is no this is not feedback inhibition why there is a reason because for feedback inhibition there must be product there must be product number one number two the product must attach itself to the first step of a multi-step reaction if i suppose this as a lipid 
and this is my cholesterol then the dietary cholesterol must attach itself to the enzyme the dietary cholesterol must attach itself to the enzyme to block it and decrease cholesterol but in in reality this does not happen there is some another indirect way this is the this would be the direct mechanism there is indirect way by which the the dietary cholesterol decrease your body cholesterol that is by the when your cholesterol in the diet increases cholesterol 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 okay this is your diet inside your diet and in, it, this enters your body inside your body this cholesterol cause interact with your dna this is your dna and you know inside the dna you have gene a lot of genes you, you have one of the gene is for this enzyme so this gene will be suppressed this gene will be suppressed and when this gene at the dna is suppressed enzyme will not be synthesized no enzyme no enzyme when enzyme is not there cholesterol will not be synthesized so the dietary cholesterol caused decrease synthesis of enzyme by this way the cholesterol production was decreased this is feedback regulation this is feedback regulation something is decreasing but this is not feedback inhibition is your cholesterol the in the diet is not going to attach with the allosteric site of the enzyme therefore feedback inhibition and feedback regulation are two different things one is a phenomena second one is a mechanism so i think you got this now coming to the next that is feedback regulation versus elastic regulation we have we have just discussed what is feedback regulation here and now the elastic regulation or you can see the feedback inhibition feedback inhibition let me try here feedback inhibition if i write it here feedback inhibition inhibition comparison with allosteric regulation the first thing is in feedback inhibition the product is involved in feedback inhibition the product so repeatedly most frequently i use the word this i i say final product final product so here the product is involved but in allosteric regulation the product is not involved instead of product other molecules are involved other molecules are what positive allosteric effectors negative allosteric effectors we have already discussed so other molecules are involved which attach themselves with the elastic site of the enzyme causing change in the shape of the active site this is one number two feedback inhibition is operative in the multi-step reaction multi-step reaction means at least two step or three but elastic regulation is involved in single step reaction now what is the common thing between these two there is difference as well as something common the common thing in between these two is both use allosteric site whether you go into the allosteric regulation topic or feedback inhibition both the process both involves 
allosteric site and you know allosteric site very well now a very good example is available for the feedback inhibition from the book of Satya Narayan Biochemistry. Uh, this is actually about the formation of pyrimidines. Pyrimidine, you know very well pyrimidine is a nucleotide. So how pyrimidine is uh, synthesized? This is synthesized in a multi-step reaction. The first step is very simple, carbamyl phosphate and aspartate. There is no need to find the structure of carbamyl phosphate. Just I would like to give you the idea of feedback inhibition. Two days in today's lecture, there is no need to go into the structure of this carbamyl or the aspartate. We don't want the structure. We just want the idea. What is the idea? these two reactants these two reactants are going to combine with each other by the help of enzyme this enzyme is called trans carbamylase enzyme trans carbamylase enzyme this is the name of that enzyme so this enzyme is going to convert these two into our product okay this is carbamyl aspartate this is our product but it is intermediate what happens this carbamyl aspartate uh, enters into another step step number two and become another product X then this X enters into another step step three and convert into product Y and finally 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 after many step this x and y convert into pyrimidine finally finally after many steps we got pyrimidine so the most important step for us are not all these steps is the first step and the first enzyme in this first step this enzyme trans carbamylase enzyme is important now what happens when pyrimidine level is high means a lot of pyrimidines are synthesized then what happens the body realizes that the pyrimidine is now in excess and what we need we need to decrease its level now so how what will happen this pyrimidine which is our product P here this pyrimidine will come attaches attach itself at the attach itself at the allosteric site this one is the allosteric site of the enzyme and this one is the active site of the enzyme you know active site is for the substrate and allosteric site is for the other molecules maybe product or positive negative effectors so once the product P attach itself here at the allosteric site what happened it changes the shape of the active site so the shape of the active site is changed now this active site cannot convert carbamyl phosphate in aspartate into carbamyl aspartate so the reaction will stop when the reaction the, when the first step is stopped second step will also be stopped consequently other steps all steps will also be uh, blocked as a result no more further pyrimidine will form so this is all the idea behind what we say feedback inhibition and allosteric regulation in a nutshell what we studied in today's lecture today's lecture was about the regulation of enzyme we discussed that in inside our body there are many ways different ways by which the enzyme activities are controlled this is the second part in which the enzyme activity will be controlled in feedback inhibition this is operative this 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 process is operative in multi-step reaction in that multi-step reaction the product which is formed the product will attach itself to the first enzyme the allosteric site of the first enzyme 
once the product attach itself to the elastic site it causes a change in the active site once the shape of the active site is changed this enzyme will not be able to convert a into b this blockage of the reaction this blockage of the reaction because of the product attachment at the elastic site is called feedback inhibition this blockage of the reaction because of the attachment of the product at the elastic site of the first enzyme is called feedback inhibition and we also discuss the difference between feedback inhibition and feedback regulation feedback inhibition is a mechanism and feedback regulation is a phenomena both are similar terms but sometimes these two are different the difference was already discussed and then we also discussed feedback inhibition and elastic regulation we saw that feedback inhibition is operative in uh, in feedback uh, inhibition the product is involved must the product is must but here product is there but product is not involved in controlling the enzyme activity product is involved product is not involved then what is involved here some other molecules are involved like positive and negative elastic uh, effectors this is operative in multi-step reaction but this is in single step reaction the common thing between these two is the elastic site i hope you got the video lecture see you in the next part of the same heading regulation of the enzyme the next part in the next video lecture take care bye bye